Hi, I'm Dale LePage. And I'm Tina Marie Billing. Welcome, Welcome to, to New, New England, England Pride TV. TV. You got New England pride, show us. You've got New England pride. Stand up, shout out, show us. You got New England pride, show us. You've got New England pride. Mm -hmm. -ba 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 New England pride. It's now time for Pride Pet Segment. Congratulations to founder Julie Utoff and Pavic Life Rescue, a nonprofit shelter rescue. The shelter was formed five years ago to save local and southern dogs. They opened the doors last month to their new facility at 510 Hartford Ave West in Uxbridge, Massachusetts. On Saturday mornings, the big yellow USDA approved tractor trailer arrives with Pets LLC and Animal Planet on its side. Many of these pups arriving are from overcrowded high kill southern shelters. On Monday afternoons, all dogs are vetted to receive a state health certificate, which certifies that they are safe to be released into the public on Monday nights. Perfect Life opens its doors, welcoming adopters to visit with adoptable dogs. To find out more information, you can go to perfectliferescue.org. That's it. I love that we do these Pride Pet segments. Yes, me too. <laughs> we'll be right back. New England Pride TV is brought to you by the Hanover Theater for the Performing Arts, Remax Vision, Bay State Savings Bank, Safe Homes, Joseph Gonzalez Dofrain, Boston Wedding Photographer, Paul Chase in Interior Design, Nuovo Restaurant, Dr. Frank P. Fetchner Plastic Surgery, Fallon Health, The Queen's Cups, Escape Games Worcester, The Fireplace Room Restaurant, Uniquely Your Decor, Art Reach, Electric Haze, Bull Mansion, Ellie's Pet Barn, Photo Documentation Services, LLC, and Next Level Pet Care. Hey kids, we're back with more New England Pride. I am so proud <laughs> to be sitting with uh, Doreen Collins, who is a actress, stand-up comedian, and my new best friend. Because we, we, we met about uh, a, month a month ago, two ago? months ago. All right. yeah. uh, I've we, been thinking about you ever since. We, I know, you've been texting me. It's getting annoying. <laughs> All right, so we, we actually were judges at the Rhode Island Pride pageant. And let me tell you, I... I I said this before and I mean it. I have a crush on Providence, Rhode Island. <gasps> they do things so amazing there. Have you ever judged yeah. an event where each judge got their own iPad? No. Right. Did you take yours home? No, oh. I could have. We weren't supposed to. You took to. yours. <laughs> 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 All right. Dor Doreen is here uh, at my request uh, to, to plug her book and plug her upcoming events. Uh, we're going to get right into it. The book is called... Confessions of a Working Girl, or How to Get Laid Off, or How to Get Laid Off. <laughs> all right. First of all, the cover of the book is hysterical, because here's you in your many jobs. Now, one thing that made me start just laughing right away was the titles of your chapters. For example, um, Women Versus Gravity. I can yeah. only guess what that's about. I can't, wow. I can't wait, right? <laughs> um, the magic of Macy's. So you worked at Macy's. I okay. did. Yeah, and Macy's Herald Square, not some in New York. Know, in New York, right? Yes. You're from you're from New York. I spent my formative years in New York. In New York. I moved to New York at 17 and stayed there on and off for 20 years. Now we're all these many. Now I don't know how many chapters there. There are um, 28 chapters, but they're short. Does, I, does that mean you had to, you've had 28 careers? No, just 28 that had funny moments. Oh, I've had even more than 28 careers. Well, when you're in entertainment, you yes. have to subsidize. And yes. when you're not a very good entertainer, you really have to subsidize. <laughs> but now these are some of the fun <laughs> these oh. are some of the funnier ones. All right, all right, okay. I wanted another volume. 
Uh, you, I'm sure jobs, you, book two. There's going to be, yeah, book two, I'm sure, right? I've had four uh, more jobs since I wrote it. But, what, <laughs> I, I mean, really, uh, trying, uh, trying a different position at work? Yes. Okay. Um, wedding Bell Blues. I was a, an unknowing wedding planner. An un oh, that must have been so stressful. Well, I, it wasn't supposed to be. I was asked, my brother's boss at the time, who was living in Boston but getting married in Rhode Island, said, would you bring the flowers to the wedding, which was going to be on a beautiful, you know, cliffside at Beaver Tail in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I'll bring your flowers, but mm -hmm. why wouldn't you, they're at your mother's house, why wouldn't your mother bring them? She said, no, I don't trust my mother. Okay, I'll pick up your flowers. Mm -hmm. So I had my brother with me and we picked up the flowers and off we go to Beaver Tail and we get there and we're driving around looking for what I guess a tent because it's oh, outside. Yeah, like an arbor or something. something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're driving around and we're doing laps and we see a tent but there's just this you know a couple of people running around so we decided well we'll go ask them is do, do they know where the wedding is and we get up there and this woman's like this, this is the wedding, but, you know, they dropped the chairs off. They didn't set up the 200 chairs. The, the wedding's in a half an hour. Oh and we're God. like, well, I said, well, let's set up the chairs. We're here. So we set up the chairs. And the whole time we're like, what an idiot. This wedding planner doesn't show up to set up the chairs. Who's running this show? And so I finally said, you know, who, who was this wedding planner? You know, what else were they supposed to do that they didn't do? Yeah. And she said, bring the flowers. I don't, no. No. <laughs> They were told you were the wedding planner? <laughs> and I was supposed to be there to, to set up chairs. Oh, my set God. Set up chairs? You were truly the unknowing wedding I, planner. Yes. Um, all right. The doctor is in. Yeah. Yeah. That was my... So were you a nurse? Were you a doctor? No, well, no, I was seven months Did you months play pregnant. doctor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I was the test dummy. No, I called my, uh, my OBGYN. I was seven months pregnant to find out when my next, you know, checkup was. And she answered the phone. And I went, why are yeah, you answering? Yeah, why is the doctor in Exactly. And where's your other hand? And <laughs> she said, um, my, my assistant didn't show up. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> my assistant didn't show up, and I said, "Well, oh my God!" I said, "I'll be in in 20 minutes." Figuring I'd help her. Helping out. For the out. Day. What a good doobie and you are. Two months later. You're you're the assistant. Yes. To your OB. Okay. Yes. For, scalpel. Right. Scalpel. No, no scalpel, please. Um, I, I have to know this one. Okay. Uh, Miss congeniality. <gasps> I I just please tell me you were in a beauty pageant. I was. Were you? Well, yeah. I freaking love this. One, one morning I woke up and I went, I want a tiara. Oh, well, doesn't everybody? Well, hello. I'm gonna well, get... no, I didn't actually until that morning, and I don't know why it came to me then. I, I want one now. Oh, okay. See, now yeah. it's, we'll make that happen. Okay, after. good. But, and then I just let it go, but then a friend of mine and I were doing an event, and there was this table uh, for Mrs. Rhode Island and this tiara. And so, of course, he Please. and I both, oh, yeah, we wrestled over that, Tiara. You, did you steal it? No, I didn't. <laughs> but I it, know her enough to know <laughs> that's a legitimate question. <laughs> but, you know, so they talked me into running for Mrs. Rhode Island. Oh, Mrs. Rhode Island. Yes. So I was like a HUD project. One of my <laughs> friends made my jewelry. One did hair and makeup. One handmade my gown. Oh, my God. It was God. just, he still blames me for his partial blindness. But <laughs> it, was, it was fabulous. But so, and I walk with my entourage, and I go, pageants are nasty. They're oh, I can, yeah, I can imagine. Oh, right. my God. Right. I, they weren't talking to each other. And I'm like, hey, you know, yep, trying yep. to, no. But so they start doing it the awards and they were like you know and best swimsuit doreen yay oh i'm so best proud of you evening right now gown. thank you best evening gown doreen oh my god yay. miss congeniality doreen i'm like yes i got this oh my then god then they went to the top 10 i didn't even put it in the top 10 <laughs> it was the interview oh Oh my God, I, I'm stunned right now. You no, won those be. three th and didn't even place in the top 10. Best evening gown, best swimsuit. Okay. F How'd so, you get, what brings you here today, Doreen? Is this your interview portion? Yeah. All right. A cab. What, <laughs> what brings you here yeah, today, no. Doreen? A cab. All right. Why do you want to be Mrs. Rhode Island? I want a tiara. Did you really say that? I did. Yeah. Because you know what? By that time and spending that time with those women, 
I didn't. You didn't want to want be. to. No, no. It wasn't. They weren't nice. I'm just. I'm just gonna go on Amazon and buy one. Ugh. Yeah. You should. Well, I'll lend you mine. I tried to be good at sports until I found out you could buy trophies for that too. So there you go. Well, and had we grown up today, you wouldn't have had to buy. Right. You'd just get one for right, showing up. Showing up. All right. Now, for those of you who are all watching on uh, Facebook and your your television set, uh, Doreen Collins is one freaking funny lady. And I want you to tell our viewers uh, at home how they can find out more about you because I'm, I know they all want to find, especially since you're Miss Congeniality. <laughs> Come on. Tell, tell us uh, your website. Well, can I tell, first let's plug the book again. Oh, Amazon. Amazon.com. Confessions of a Working Girl or How to Get Laid. Off. off. You know, the original <laughs> title was Over 50 and Still Getting Laid. Dot, dot, dot. Off. off. But we didn't want to. You know, I want those 30-year-old people to buy it, too. All but right, so Amazon. Go to Amazon, type in, type in Doreen Collins, um, Doreen Collins, Amazon.com. Yes, please. Uh, yes, please. Uh, but you know what? These will, make, these will make really great gifts. They do. They're great stocking stuffers. Yep. And even if you don't wear stockings, they're, shove them down your pants. <laughs> Um, but they're, and they're, they're little, yes. they're, I write like I read. I have a very short Super attention ADD. span. Yes. Yeah. So they're two okay. page chapters. Right. Two, so it'll only take me a week to read this. Exactly. Okay. Or bring it in the bathroom, leave it in the bathroom. Now, also you have a website for your performances. I do. Okay. It's what's that? TheDoreenCollins.com. TheDoreenCollins. And I, I, sounds very dynasty. Well, and the only reason I had to go with the yep. is because DoreenCollins.com was already taken by a dead artist in England, and I don't know why, what she's doing with it. So maybe you should have made it not dead, DoreenCollins.com? Maybe. Okay, all right. That's enough. <laughs> we, we, unfortunately, that would be referring to my career. We are, not it's not dead. All right, unfortunately, we are out of time. Please go to Doreen's website. Go to Amazon. Do everything. Just get the book <laughs> and support our very funny friend. We'll be back with more New England Pride TV right after this. Um... Opposed to doing uh, my normal letter and commentary, um, I want to talk about just being able to inspire people, you know, just by who you are. You don't need all the fancy costumes in order to inspire people. All you have to do is really just be a good person. But the reason why I bring that up is that I received a letter and I want to read it to you. And I want you to understand that anybody can make a difference. We just have to try. Um, I'll just read it, and we can enjoy it together. Hi, Lady Sabrina. I know you don't know me, and I'm sure you get a lot of fan mail from lots of people expressing gratitude for changing their lives, and etc. This is something similar. However, it wasn't my life you saved. It was my son's. Last year... August of 2017 was a day, a month, I will never forget. Before I get into that, I would like to give you a short background. My son has struggled with depression, anxiety, PTSD, just to name a few. He was a generally happy child, loved Barbies, and anything that resembled girly. I have always been the mom, you know, the type that doesn't lose her stuff over her son wearing pink or playing with dolls. Fast forward to six years old. His behavior started to change. He just wasn't that carefree little boy anymore. I consulted his pediatrician. She suggested therapy. And then he attended therapy for the next five years. In that time, things started to go back to what I thought was normal. Happy, carefree, relaxed. That light started to burn again. August 2017 came. He was now 11. I was cleaning his room while he was away with his father for the weekend. I turned up his mattress and found all kinds of crumpled up notes, all addressed to me. Dear Mom, I know you're going to hate me. Dear Mom, I don't know how to say this. Dear Mom, I'm gay. I know you won't love me. So I have packed all my things and I will go live with Dad. Sorry gets to me a little. There were drawings of him dead. Suicide. He was contemplating death, all because he was gay and truly believed I wouldn't love him. I had to do something, 
I know it's never one's place to out someone, but if it means saving his life, I'll shout it from the rooftops. Once mentioned, he came out. I told him I loved him, enough said. That was all he needed, and of course, I screamed. <laughs> he started attending Rainbows and Confetti in school, and that's where he was introduced to the amazing Lady Sabrina. Aww. During Pride in Claremont, I watched the love of my life watch you. I saw him gain confidence. I saw him. I saw my son. You are who he inspires to be. And for you, I am and will forever be grateful. I can't thank you enough for showing my son that he can be who he is and be loved through it. You know my son, Lady Sabrina. After all, you were the one oh, who talked to him at prom. So I'm going to leave that right there. And I think that we should all do good. Back to you, Dale. Love and light, Lady Sabrina. Hey kids, we are back with more New England Pride TV. I am joined right now by singer, songwriter, entertainer extraordinaire, Mr. Justin Dearborn. Welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for coming on. Thank I, you. This has been a, probably a year, probably a year, trying to get you on this show. You're awesome. a very busy guy. Yes. Now, the, the <laughs> first time I met you, or actually uh, was introduced to you, was at a Pride event. You were performing at Pride, and it was fantastic. And I said, I've got to get that guy on New England Pride TV. As a matter of fact, I did a mini interview with you that day. That's right. Yeah. Now, that wasn't your first Pride performance, was it? Um, yes, actually, it was my it first was. Pride, and it was the first Pride that I've been to as a, you know, audience member as well. So. Now, how did you find that, being your first Pride? Um, so my manager and, I, manager and I, we have an excellent relationship, and we're always, you know, booking new things, and uh, we just contacted them, and I got on the, the show. Nice. So. nice. Now, what's your manager's name? Jai. Jai. Yeah. Jai. Shout She's out the to, cool lady. She does all the business. Shout out to Jai. Right. Shout out to Jai. Yeah. <clears throat> right. She's been, I've been contacting her for this show. Yes. And um, so you performed um, songs that you wrote? That um, yeah, I did a few covers as well. I yeah. did Lady Gaga, I did uh, Michael Bublé. Which Lady Gaga? It was Poker Face. And which Michael Bublé? I'm just curious. Uh, Home. Oh, the, I love that song. song. I love both those songs, actually. Now, you, uh, you were performing all over New England, and I know you uh, just performed at Boston Pride. That's um, right. What songs did you sing there? Did you sing original tunes or dance songs? Yes, or? I did four or five uh, original songs. It was an amazing experience. Um, it was really fun to be able to do that show. Nice. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun. Great. Now, one of the things that I always ask our musician uh, guests, and because I'm so curious about this and I, and I love hearing these stories. Now, you are a, a songwriter. And how long have you been a songwriter? When did you start writing? I started singing and writing songs when I was 10 years old. Wow, that's super young. Yeah. Do you remember so, like those so. songs at all? Uh, yeah. Did you try to re yeah, no, we did, won't, you, we won't. did you try to like remix them and make them work for another time? Did you Um so at the time I was also like producing music. I taught myself how to produce music yeah. and I would take singing lessons and dance classes and you know that's kind of how I got everything started with the music from there. Um I'm going to get back to the songwriting, but you just said dance lessons. Mm -hmm. So that reminds me of, uh, and I wanted to let our viewers at home know, that I saw you again a few months later. I was a judge at a songwriting competition, and I'm sitting there at the judge's table, and in walks Justin. And you did a fantastic job, and the thing that I really liked that nobody else did is you were up there moving, and you had a great stage presence. Yeah, well, thank and you. And nobody, nobody did that. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people just focus on the instrument. They play guitar and they sing, but when I do my shows, I like to be more theatrical with it, be more engaging, and, you know, I obviously do the choreography as well sometimes. So. And it, it is, is engaging. Now, um, how many instruments do you play? Do you play piano? I play you? piano a yeah. little bit. Yeah, I haven't done that in a while, but, uh, yes, I do play piano. Now, do you do um, your background tracks yourself? Do you have a a band that you work with? How do you get those? Sometimes. So yep. I 
most of the time I record my own vocals um, just because I'm very meticulous with what I like right. and I come up with all the harmonies and the uh, layers. And, and I loved that. Yeah. It was it was like layer upon layer upon layer. Yeah. All these beautiful harmonies. Yeah. And you're singing the lead. It was it was awesome. Awesome. Thank and, you. And and I uh, when this was at the judges table and I was like he's doing all those harmonies. And I said to the judge next to me, he goes, he is? I'm like, yeah, that's him. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if people need to know that. It's quite the process. Right. Definitely. It's, it's a, what, what is the process of that? So, I usually get a track, just the instrumental track from mm -hmm. a producer, and we go back and forth making changes to it until yeah. I feel like it's what I want yeah. and what I want to talk about. And then I go in and I write the lyrics and, like I said, do all the layers, the harmonies, and, you know, make some changes from there and then... Hopefully, if uh, it's good enough, I release it as a single. So, um, a lot of songwriters I talk to um, write the lyrics first mm -hmm. and the melody, but you get the music first yeah. and you write to go along yeah. with that. I mean, it varies. That's probably the most common thing that I do is get the uh, you know, melody first and yep. then I write the lyrics, but sometimes I'll work off of a song title if I have an idea for that. Um, so it's just kind of however my creative brain takes me. So Where the, wherever we whichever go. Whichever way yeah. the juices flow, right? That's right. Now, um, what's the last song that you wrote? The last song that I've written was uh, Masterpiece. That was a single that came out a while ago. And it was a really cool song because it was kind of different than anything I've ever done. It has this whole like EDM feel to it. And I've actually never performed it because it's very electronic and it would be very difficult to do that. To do that. Um, but yeah, go check it out. YouTube.com slash Justin Dearborn Music and you can see all the, the singles are, there. Are all the links um, to all your videos also on your website? Yes. Yes. Yep. Facebook.com slash Justin Dearborn Music as well as ReverbNation.com slash Justin Dearborn Music. Right. Now, um, how long have you been singing professionally? Um, professionally, since don't, I was... Don't say t since you were 10. No, 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 17. <laughs> 17, 17 is when I... Okay. Really so just two years ago. <laughs> right, right. No, yeah. not two years ago. Um, yeah, that's when I really got my start um, doing it more like, you know, out there and doing paid shows and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you, in the beginning, when you were first starting to get gigs, because a lot of, um, a lot of uh, musicians, um, singers, songwriters um, uh, that I know have such a hard time getting gigs. That's why... Great management is so helpful. It's so helpful. Definitely, yeah. definitely. It's all the you know the people you surround yourself with is what makes it. Now, how was the Hard Rock? The Hard Rock was very fun. Um, it's a, an iconic venue, yes. um, so that was really great. And I had you know all my fans up front, and they nice. they knew the words, so that was always oh, isn't that that's you know wonderful. gratifying to to see that they they know the material. They know the so. material. Yeah. And um, I, uh, I I especially I had something really kind of rare for me, you probably get this all the time, but uh, I did a gig last weekend and um, we always ask if there's any requests and somebody actually sent in a, a request and it was an original tune, which I, that never happened before. You were like, like, wow. Yeah, oh my somebody gosh. likes my stuff. Like, yeah. and it must be such an overwhelming feeling of love to look out into that crowd and see people singing along to your original tunes. They know all the words. They know, yeah, that must be wonderful. very cool. You know, growing up, I've always had a hard time accepting myself. But when I get on stage and see everyone just being really supportive and everything like yeah. that, it just makes me feel really cool. So Yeah, and, yeah. and from a performance standpoint, that just feeds you with so much energy, doesn't it? Yeah. Just to see... The audience the, has to be... Right. If they're not, then it's like, okay. Absolutely. You know, but, yeah. Absolutely. Um, now, what do you have coming up uh, for us? Um, I know you're performing at a bunch of Prides. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, you have uh, any singles coming out this year? Um, I do have a single coming out. It's called Crucify. And it's also something that's very different than what I've done before. And I'm in the process of just writing that and working with the producer to get the track the way I want. And that should be out soon. We don't have a, an exact release date this, thus far. But, but uh, I love that you in the, in the, in just in this interview, you said about two different songs. It's very different. So you're really like you know, stretching Always. your creativity. And yeah. I, I love that. Yeah, I don't like to repeat the same stuff every track yeah. that I make, I like to make it like totally different than what I've done before. And a lot of your stuff is very danceable, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do Wonderful. dance pop. Dance pop.
That's how you describe your, your genre? Yes, dance pop, dance pop and electro pop. Electro pop. Whatever I'm feeling, maybe some hip hop influence. Love it, I, yeah. I absolutely love that. Um, I will see you at Pride, I'll, I'll be there uh, too, and uh, New England Pride will be set up at uh, the Worcester Pride, and mm -hmm. if you're there, please come over and get another interview and n another shout out, we'll tell you how Sweet. awesome you are again. And, um, all right, thank you. Our, this is unfortunately, uh, I, these interviews are way too short for me, but that's what we have to do time-wise. Okay. So, we have come to the end of this interview, but I need to know uh, from you is, how can people buy your music, find your music, find you, stalk yeah. you? Maybe so. Um, again, Facebook.com slash Justin Dearborn Music, ReverbNation.com slash Justin Dearborn Music. You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram as well, if you just search my name. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We'll be back with more New England Pride right after this. Hello, and welcome back to Rod's Propaganda. There are a lot of serious problems in the world these days. So today, I would like to talk to you about soap. Yes. I was with a friend who took me to Lush, which is a place I'd never heard of, but it is a whole store that just sells soap. But do they have Irish Spring? No, they do not. So Lush is one-stop shopping when all you need is fancy soap. And this is how rich people spend their days. Normal people, we go to the supermarket and we get everything we need. Rich people are like, oh, I had such a busy day today. I had to go to Lush to get soap. Went to Amy's for fresh bread and I got all the ingredients for the guacamole at separate farmer's markets. Don't ask me why rich people are British. It's just a fact. So we went in and the salesperson comes up to us and says, what brings you here today? So I said, poor judgment. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but I'm obnoxious in real life too. So this place is too fancy for ivory or dove and none of its customers would be caught dead being zestfully clean. <laughs> no, their gimmick is something called a bath bomb, which is basically like bubble bath from when you were a kid, but in solid form. Just add water and it detonates. So I buy the cheapest one, and my friend gets the bath bomb of his dreams, and we leave. But before we part, I said, I don't know what to do now. I, like, I don't feel qualified to do this without supervision. <laughs> but I don't want supervision <laughs> now. So do they have a support line that I could call? <laughs> Hello, I'm naked in my bathroom and uh, filling the tub with water and I need some help. Representative. <laughs> no, I mean, am I supposed to put it in before I fill it with water? Is there an optimal time for me to drop the bomb? I spent $5 on this. This needs to be a Facebook life event for me. <laughs> and actually, according to the bag uh, that it came in, it's fresh, handmade, and 100% vegetarian. <laughs> Honest to God. <laughs> No comment, because that's all the time we have for Rod's Propaganda. It's time to end the show right now. Please don't be afraid to shine your light. Because you might be lighting the way for someone in need. That's right. We're going to end the show with Justin Dearborn's music right now. can still shut down a party I can hang with anybody I can drink a whiskey and red wine champagne all night a little scotch on the rocks and I'm fine I'm fine but when I taste tequila baby I still see ya cutting up the floor to sorority t-shirt the same one you wore when we were sky high in Colorado Your lips pressed against the bottle Swearing on a Bible, baby, I'll never leave ya I remember how bad I need ya when I Yeah, yeah, yeah Tune in 
You got New England pride. Show us you've got New England pride. Stand up, shout out, show us you got New England pride. Show us you've got New England pride. New England pride.